This is the biggest mistake most podcasters make. You 100% believe that you're right. And I believe that it's right for you. You tell me my podcast sucks. Gary's not doing it. Grant's not doing it. Nobody's doing it. That you right. can do Who it. What's the cameras hacking. and no one else does it but this me. This is it. Ooh, good hack. Hey guys, JB, the wolf is in the wolf's den for another awesome podcast. Got a great guest today. Evan Carmichael. Thanks Canadian. for having me, man. Yes, Canadian entrepreneur. You're just an entrepreneur, right? Happens to be born from Canada, I'm, right? I'm, I'll rep Canada. I'm happy to rep Canada. <laughs> I love Canada, by the way. Great cool, country. A little cold for my uh, taste, but I have a lot of good friends there. So tell me what it is about you okay. that makes you, um, what was it, attractive or, or, or you know, f famous or you sort of in your own life an influence? What do you think it is about you that separates you from other people? Because, like, listen, I know, like, Mike has have a movie about my life, but, like, you're just, like, average guy, but you somehow rose up. What do you think that is? Because there's so many people that would love to do what you do. Yeah, I mean, I think your purpose comes from your pain. So I think whatever you struggled with the most growing up is the thing you want to help other people with. So my first business, I had a biotech software company when I was 19 and um, struggled a lot. It was making 300 bucks a month, owned 30% of this company, and um, just was too afraid to tell my friends I had no money and I couldn't go out and felt worthless as a human. And the thing that got me out was studying Bill Gates and his success and how he, he made it. Not how he makes an extra million now, but zero to one. How did he do that? I applied that to my business and started seeing results. And within two years, then I got acquired, sold the business. And so I went from, you know, having no money to, to having an exit. And how, Was it a big exit? Or? I was decent, decent enough. Um, so much that, I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't retire for the rest of my life, but. You I want to say how much or no? Is it? We, I haven't, I haven't. So we'll, we'll keep how that. Much? How we'll, much? Keep I'm that. nosy. North of five million? Uh, seven figures, but all right, fine. So we'll go whatever. seven figures. That's good. <laughs> Considering where you started, it's freaking awesome. I, you know, I, I always said this like this: the first million is probably the hardest because from there you're, you know, and I know you're a big believer in in belief systems. So it's almost yeah. like before you have that first big win under your belt, it's almost like you don't think it's possible, and because of that, you don't take the actions because when you play the movie you're like ah, i can't see myself being successful right yeah and so i mean i didn't need to go do something next but i also wasn't set for yeah. life and i was also 22 so what was the distinction what happened that you say you know when the what was the change modeling success i mean i felt like i tried everything myself nothing was working i told my business partner that i quit worst day of my life um because nothing was working, you know? It wasn't that we didn't agree on things, just nothing was working. I needed to feel like I was a valuable human again. And so I said, I quit, and then, you know, barely slept that night, and the next day said, I can't quit. I, I, if I quit now, I'm gonna regret it. I just have to find another way to stand. She did biotech software. Mm -hmm. Explain what that is exactly. It was just early stage drug discovery. So I'm not, I wasn't the scientist, I wasn't the coder, I was the business guy. So, um, you know, long story short, if a cancer, if a cell had cancer in it, you cut open the cell, you stick something in, you close the cell, you see if the cancer goes away. Our, our software would help you design that experiment to do it. Um, but Bill Gates' story was the thing that saved me because he built Microsoft through partnerships. And his big deal came with IBM when every IBM ship had Microsoft software on it. But Microsoft was already a $7 million company when that happened. Mm. How do you get to seven? Like seven million is not huge, but it's still seven million more than what I had. How did they do that? More partnerships. So I started going after partnerships. And I landed my first deal pretty short after that was thirteen and a half thousand dollars. That doesn't sound like a lot of money, but to me that was all that, was, that was bank. Uh, and more important, I had a strategy I could use again and again and again. So we started closing deals around the world. And what was the strategy? Partnerships, finding Joint distribution ventures. partnerships. Yes, especially. So the channel provides people already selling to the customers rather than you trying to sell the customer yourself. You found people already selling to that customer and. Sort of semi-wholesale deal, so to speak. Yeah, and we also, we did non-exclusive and exclusive. We, we gave leads to, like, they could sell them better than we could sell them. Mm -hmm. They could sell better than I could sell. Mm -hmm. And so we gave them the leads for all the different markets we were going after. And, and then they started doing well. And so that strategy of modeling Bill Gates saved my business. And then I wanted to teach it to other people. And so ever since, I'm probably best known right now for my YouTube channel. We have 2 million subscribers, 300 million views. And we profile people. We've had you on a couple of times, profiling your story, uh, showcasing different entrepreneurs and where you can learn from their success. Got and it. So that's, you know, we do three to four videos a day, done it for 10 years, and 6,000 videos later, here I am. 
So going back to Bill Gates for a second, right? So you know the success of Bill Gates, I think what most people don't realize it was really his ability to influence and persuade was a huge part of it. Yeah. In other words, you know, he convinced IBM to choose him as the provider of software for this early computer, and then he didn't actually even own the software at the time, right? He had to go to someone else and convince them to sell. So he middled a transaction. Yep. Right, which was became MS DOS essentially that that program, right? Yeah, for the Mitz Altair. Yeah, right? that was yes. his very first deal. Right, so he made, he didn't own the he's that poor guy who was the sell to right. I think it was like fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars he paid the guy for the program or something, and and then sold it to IBM and this you know in every computer, right? Yeah, I mean, I be the IBM deal came a lot later. The IBM deal came when they were already a seven million dollar company. Were they that big then? They were seven million in revenue. I mean, that big. It's a small company compared to what what they're at now. I thought they were more. Of a, I thought they were still um, much more early stage than the IBM. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, you probably studied it more than me. Yeah, I mean, maybe I got history wrong too. I'm know, open man, to I, it. I, I, just, you know, I probably read it to so, so I, I thought they were really early stage, and um, I, I remember. You know, my my takeaway it didn't really matter what they were. Whether they were a million or seven, my takeaway was the interesting part to me was the fact that he he used the power of persuasion yeah. to sell both sides and then <laughs> met the two. And that was honestly the message that connected me to you for the first time. Was there was a video clip that you had? Or you're speaking on stage. You did some kind of training where you were saying that the ability sales really the ability to persuade, right. and whoever's more confident wins. And and really that's what you're you want to make the other person feel certainty. Exactly. That that you the have a message. Transference of certainty. Exactly. Like that's a really cool way to put it. And I think in our first video that we profiled you on, uh, that was in there because that's well, what really struck with me. A lot of people struggle with communication. You can just call it communication because you know it's not just selling. Selling almost puts it in too much of a box like a professional salesperson, right? The ability to get your point across to someone else and. And I think that you know, what, what, I think one of the reasons why I've had success at training salespeople is because I think people don't know what they're actually doing when they what what are you actually accomplishing? You know, it's, what is really happening when someone goes from saying, "Let me think about it," to "Yes." And what happens is their level of certainty increased through some you know whatever threshold. So they said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, actually makes sense. Let's do it." Right. So I think yeah. a lot of people struggle. They don't. I mean, they just. I think they're just talking and there's no context to the whole conversation. It's not goal oriented. You know what I mean? And what made you want to do this then to now have a show to, I mean, now we're flipping the script maybe a little bit, but I'm curious Oh, sure. to have a show to, to, to create content for a bigger audience and what you're currently doing. Good question. So, you know, I think that on some level, um, I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of amazing information and knowledge and wisdom that they can bring to the world, but because they're not famous, so they don't have a following, it kind of just gets locked up inside of them. So when I was, people would ask me to do podcasts for a long time, right? And I started saying, you know what? It might be really fun to go to like just, you know, not just famous people, but to average people who are really successful and just kind of extract their strategies and share them with other people. It's sort of a really cool thing to do. And also, I thought it would be a great lead generator for my business as well. Broadens the appeal. People get to see different, a different side of me. Um, and I also believe in the actual medium itself. I believe that podcasting is going to be uh, an important way that people communicate over the next 10 to 20 years. And uh, at some level, not in the level of replace radio, but I think it has a lot of benefits over radio. Um, no barrier to entry and so forth. So I thought it was, a, it was. I thought the timing was right, you know. And I'll tell you one more point before before I go back to you and yeah, ask yeah, you a yeah. question. Is that um, the biggest drawback? Because like, well, how am I going to find all the guests? Now, obviously, I know I'm a well known person, but just that whole process of logistically going out and booking guests. So as I expanded my own business here, and a lot of employees said, "Well, I could just take that person." It was actually Lisa, who's one of my sales, top salespeople, and Lisa would just say, oh, "I'd love to go out and recruit people." So that was sort of the natural evolution of it, right there, you know. As far as you're concerned, though, right? Yeah. Um, when you started, so you do a, would you say is it a podcast you do? How would you define what you do on YouTube? Well, see, this is a thing because this is the biggest mistake most podcasters make is they think podcast first. Right. You need to think video first. Mm. You need to think YouTube first. Okay. Explain that. YouTube is the only platform where your content lives forever. People are not going back two weeks on your Instagram. They're not going back two days on your on your tweets. Mm -hmm. Even your podcast, people aren't going back on your audio archive of your podcast. Some hardcore fans will, but for the most part, they're not. This video that's gonna live on YouTube in five years is still getting you views, still getting you subscribers, still getting you leads, still getting you attention, still getting you traction. Mm -hmm. Video first. 
and then audio becomes everything else. So in other words, if you were a person with a great message, right, you'd say that, A, don't just go audio for sure, right? Definitely put it on YouTube, right? Video and, first. And make it, make the, the video aspect sort of like, you know, you know, high quality, right? Is, so is there, is there some sort of like, you know, here's, what, here's my take on it, right? It's a very different audience that watches this, this episode on YouTube versus on Spotify or iTunes. The ones that are watching it on iTunes and Spotify are going to watch every single one as they come out. And it's sort of like, as you say, it's not like an archival thing. They'll watch it, it comes out, they watch it, it's over, right? Mm -hmm. Here, the interesting thing is, let's say you have one really big video here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily translate to every other video you do. So while while on the while on the audio side, your 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 listenership grows like sort of at a very smooth curve. Here it's more spikish on YouTube. So I think they complement each other well. So when my goal with, the, with this, just you know, is to kind of mix, take the power of YouTube, and then intersect that. So like the last ten minutes, we'll do audio. So that people get to share the audio experience as well. So in the audio, when people start to do audio, there's a lot more uh, places they can listen get used to listening in their car, right? I mean, I'm not, the last thing I'm looking to do is to take people who don't listen to podcasts and try to make them listen to podcasts. Like, the better sure. part is take those who listen to podcasts and have them listen to your podcast. Probably a more effective strategy. It's really about exposure and reach. I'm not addicted to YouTube. If YouTube wasn't the best place for people to be, like, I wouldn't be advocating for it. In 20 years, it's going to be Jordan Belfort in hologram form, beaming into your living room, teaching techniques, right? right? It's, about, it's about exposure. It's about attention. How did it start for you on YouTube? Tell me, was there, you know, so was your success instant or was it something that, you know, you struggled for a while and then you made some shifts, snips and tucks and something happened and you had one video went viral? What happened? Yeah, so it took me five years to get to 7,000 subscribers and then five years to get to 2 million. Uh, now, in the first five years, I wasn't taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. It was uploading every now and then. I was super nervous and shy in front of the camera. I'm an introvert naturally, so I think a lot. Um, but it took a while to get my message out, be comfortable in front of the camera. What is your message? Belief. I Tell me. I think, I think the biggest problem in the world is a lack of belief. I think everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something, but they don't either one, have they, they never tried it. They haven't tried enough things. They get locked into just some pattern um, or two, they don't believe themselves enough to chase it down. Like my live stream from last week, guys, right? Yeah, was, exa funny. was exactly this topic. Yeah. Right. People listening, watching, you are the best in the world at something, but you're not doing it. You know, I think that's true and not true. I think that 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 I, I, I would have to disagree, okay? Um, I, I think your point is well taken. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I love it. Okay, but I don't think that every person is the best at something. I think that, I think that um, there are some people out there with extraordinary talents, okay? There are all Michael Jordans out there. There are mm -hmm. Roger Federer's. Um, there are people like me who are great at selling naturally, right? I think most people are average. I do. Let me, let me, let me finish, though. Yeah, However, yeah. through hard work and skills training, you could take what is probably, an, a, let's say, a, a, an affinity. So there's, and there's a difference between being the best in the world and having an affinity, something that you can be approved upon. And I think if you work really hard at something and you skill up, okay, what was started off as a talent or just a, an average talent can become an extraordinary talent. So I think there's a hard work component. I don't think it's all you're naturally great. So because because then the reason I say that is because what happens is I think many people aren't naturally great, and because of that, they'll go and try to do something extraordinary. But because they lack the skill sets, they get a result and form a limiting belief as a result of that. Sure. So my theory is that you know you better all be really ready to skill up and make yourself, I believe everyone has the potential to make themselves extraordinary. That's, I think, sure. that's, what do you think about that? When you say the like same it. thing, it's just a little bit more yeah. one step. Is that kind of where you go or you believe that everyone has a natural talent like without even trying? No, not natural talent. I mean, I didn't have a natural talent for any of this stuff. So the ability, the, I think I'm saying the ability to turn yourself into something extraordinary. I believe but, that. But it, turn yourself into the best in the world at something. I would agree with that. that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. So there's this idea that, you know, so question is, you teach people to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Like, do you start, like, you know, a person I respect, you know, Ed Millet, right? Okay. He was on my podcast. He has something very profound. He goes, don't try to monetize your passion. It's a joke. You might suck at your passion. Monetize what you're great at, naturally. That was Ed's take, mm -hmm. right? Agree or disagree? Uh, you need to mix what you love with what there's a demand for. Okay. If you love it, but there's no demand, you have a hobby. 
and that can fill your soul, but it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. If you're just chasing what's hot, but you have no interest in it, mm -hmm. you're never going to win because you're going up against people who absolutely love the thing. It's in that intersection of what you love doing with what there is a market for. Let's say you are really naturally great at something, but you don't particularly like it that much. What do you do? I think you'll get destroyed by you, people who you, love you, it. Who love it. Like you think passionate. Over. What? Sorry, say the question. Well, well, Pat, no, you think that so you think that you'll get they'll get destroyed by people who are also really great but are also passionate. Yeah, yeah. If without the if, passion, you can't get yourself to. It's just too much work. Because to your point of actually getting in the gym and doing the work, Jordan was not just in the gym once a month working on his jump shot. What about all the things that are really difficult to love? Guy sells toilet bowls for a living. People sell faucets, hardware, steel. How do you love steel? I'm, I'm, being, I'm not even trying to be. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to say. How do you like? You know, the idea is: is do you love success? Do you love winning? Do you love the actual business itself? You know, there's like there are so many people out there. Too, so many people out there who are successful, mm -hmm. who build huge businesses. These mundane guy. I know he makes plastic fucking tubs. How do you get passionate about making plastic tubs? But or is it or is that's not the actual business itself? Is that passion about manufacturing or passion about building an organization? Like, can you, you see what I'm saying? Here? This, yeah, yeah. This, this, it's got to be passion for the process. If if you're we're doing this on a Monday, right? If you're waking up on a Monday, like, oh, you're done. You got to be excited about the work that you're about to go off and do. And from all the people that I've studied, that's that's the number one trait that comes in over and over and over and over again. That is the, is the lo love of the process of what they're doing every day. Okay. So there's that. Then talk. Let's talk about the actual, you know, the skilling up. So when you you're big, I think break this like you you modeled Bill mm -hmm. Gates, right? Mm -hmm. what, and what was the, the 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 you said it was just joint venturing, yeah, going to channel providers, mm -hmm. right? And that got you to the point where you built your first successful business. Then you sold it. How old were you? Nine, well, twenty two. At that time, it was twenty two. Yeah. Twenty two. Okay. Yeah. So, so you found yourself in a position where okay, I got some money. Yeah. Uh, I can take a step back. I can't retire forever, but you got a taste of success, right? Big belief builder, right? What was the next step? Um, I don't. I don't believe in step back. It's only step forward. So next was trying to figure out what I want to do next, and I I tasted a whole bunch of stuff. You, in life, you have these moments of clarity when you know you need to go off and do something, and that's when you put the blinders on and just focus. And right now, YouTube is definitely that sweet spot for me. And so we're going blinders on. I was in a meeting this morning. We how talked old are you? Um, how old am I? 30, 39. No, no, so it was when you were 22. Yeah. What was the next step? What was that first, so you, what, when you put the blinders on? Yeah, so I didn't know yet, right? Like I was blinders on for my company. This is what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, absolute focus. I sell it, I don't know what to do next. Right, so now, now you, what was your next so step now? you now? try everything. So What did you I, try? Everything, but the one that kind of <laughs> stuck was uh, venture capital. I never okay. had to do, and we never had to raise. We were close. We thought about it. We got bought before we raised. Okay. So I'm from Toronto. There were, there were uh, four guys who are financial intermediaries raising venture capital for companies. One guy was angel. Three guys were, were VC. Mm -hmm. And they were all in their 60s or 70s, had the street super connected. You ever uh, do it with Stan Barty up there from Forbes Manhattan? I don't think more so. More mining. It's actually more mining stuff. Oh, okay. Now he Probably does. Not. He is a big mining guy up there. Great guy. Okay. Mining can be hard for VCs to get behind. Well, there's VCs for mining. You, you need, you need yeah, special, you need they, special, they, yeah, special yeah, yeah. money for that, yeah. Um, anyway, so they were all in their 60s or 70s. This was their, not their retirement job, but they weren't pushing as hard as, you know, okay. as before. And so I, their biggest thing was deal flow. They needed deal flow. So that's what I came in and did. And they taught me all the other industries because I only knew one business, which was my biotech software startup that we built and sold. And now I got exposure to pretty much everything. My being in VC. Yeah, that's where I worked, learned a lot myself. When you take yeah. another company's public and you, 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 you quickly better learn how to, you know, the comings and goings of the companies so you get slaughtered in that industry. And then as a result of that, I got asked to, as a young entrepreneur, I got some highlights and, and Canada sent me on a bunch of different trips to represent the country, young entrepreneurs. So I got a taste of speaking and helping out other entrepreneurs. And then that led me down the path that I'm currently on. And right now it's back to blinders on with YouTube. Like, so when, what, what, when was that? When did that whole, this new path start? How many years now? Uh, 22 to 24 was probably the VC era where I'm just learning and, and trying to soak up knowledge and mentorship and these guys took me under their wing and then starting at 24 I started building a website with content um i used the website as a lead gen for the vc business mm -hmm. so it was creating content around raising capital 
and had my website up. And then as I found a business model around that, started having all these other guest writers contribute content, had hundreds of thousands of pages of content off my name, and then turned that into a speaking career, turned it into a YouTube channel. And YouTube, again, was just an early test. I love, I love just small tests and just see where it goes and see how sure. you feel about it. Um, and then eventually YouTube took off and that became the game. So you were teaching other people how to raise money, venture capital? Kind of. Uh, a little bit of education for people, but more I wanted lead gen for the business. I uh, wanted people who were, had high growth companies mm -hmm. who could come into the company and, and you know, we could help them raise money. And what was it? So, tell me what's your what's your current model right now? Like, what's how does it work right now? So, I know you do you do speaking, right? You do the YouTube. Is there some sort of is there a product info product that you sell? Um, just about to launch a, a YouTube course. I think it just went out of beta today. So great, here it is, official launch. Wait, let's wait. What is it? <laughs> YouTube bootcamp: How to get to million subscribers on your YouTube channel. A heavy focus on thought leaders, entrepreneurs, people who have a message, getting it out there into the world why YouTube is the best place to be, and then some of the hacks to be able to get there a lot faster. So let's go through, give me five steps to build a YouTube. Give me the, the synopsis of the course so everyone will run and buy it. Sure, so first off, um, if, you have a, if you're an expert, you have a powerful opinion, I want you to lead every video with a powerful opinion. Most people suck at the start of their videos. Give they me say, an example. They say, hey, it's me, welcome back, welcome, nope, gone, right? You got five seconds. Hit me with a powerful opinion. Teach me something right out of the gate. Even though I have 300 million views on my channel, 83 to 85% of the people coming to my videos are non-subscribers. Hmm. So it's, it's new people. Sure. As big as even your brand is, mm -hmm. most people still don't know who you are. Hmm. And so it's you're- a big world. Yeah, you're assuming <laughs> that they don't know who you are. Right. Well, and they probably, in my case, they probably know them, but they're not quite sure what they're going to hear, right? So you got to tell them real quickly. So, so lead with a powerful like, opinion. Just, not to interrupt you, it really amazes me, the shortness of the attention span. Like, see, five second views is unbelievable. It really is amazing, right? How, At the beginning, what? but see, YouTube is a long form platform. Like these podcasts work great in a YouTube environment, mm -hmm. um, but you have to hook me on the first five seconds. You got to make me care, make me, me listen. Give me an example of a great hook. Give me a powerful opinion. What do you have? Just like when you're knocking on the door and somebody's trying to decide whether they want to close the door and say, thank you, I'm not interested, versus spend 25 minutes with you at the door, it's what do you say right at the beginning? What's the pitch for your YouTube? Give me the, the of your YouTube uh, uh, course. How would you like cook me in five seconds? Most people suck at, 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 at selling people or getting uh, if engagement you, on YouTube. Yeah, if you're an expert, you need to be on YouTube. It needs to be your number one place. You're, so, you're wasting your time in podcasting. So you start saying if you, okay, so the, the powerful opinion is if you're an expert, yeah. You must be on YouTube or you're yep. wasting your time. It's got to be your number one choice. And then is, let me tell you why. Then it's, then it's context, mm -hmm. right? So then YouTube is the only place where your content lives forever. The mm -hmm. stuff that you're making right now in five years will still be getting you views, money, subscribers for your channel. If you are not, and then, and then you leave with, you raise the stakes after that. So it's like three sentences before you ever get to your, your intro. Like, hey, I'm Jordan Belfort and I do X, Y, Z, right? Uh, this, there is a moment right now where you can still win on YouTube, but the window is closing. And if you don't take advantage of this opportunity right in front of you right now, you're going to regret it the rest of your life. Why do you think the window's closing? More people are getting in. Like the number of people who look like you, who've had success in their, their respective fields, are now seeing Gary and they're seeing Grant and they're seeing all these people have success with YouTube and say, I know more than that guy. How does that guy have a million subscribers? I want to jump into the game too. I wouldn't speak about Gary, but I'd say with Grant, they're probably right. <laughs> but people, people look who are and listen. I love everybody. I, I, I know I saw the interview you guys did I'm here. Just busting his balls, I'll never stop busting his balls after that. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I feel obligated. But I think Gary's a really I have a tremendous respect for Gary. But there's a lot of people who who look like you who will also say, "Listen, I think I've done more than Gary." How come he has all this following? I should do it too. Well, and Gary was very smart that he got in early and uh, yeah. and um, he did something that used to. I mean, to me, I didn't like it because I, I used, to, I'm you know, I'm I'm older and yeah. I said, wow, so much content. But people like that, so I respect that. You know, you get get when someone's right, they're right, right. And what Gary did great was YouTube video long form was his number one. That uh -huh. then he rips and puts it everywhere else. Right. So and is that what you do? Yeah, YouTube, YouTube video has to be number one. So it seemed like a pretty simple, because right, that, that makes sense to me, and that's kind of, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, an intelligent strategy for everyone to follow. So in other words, you know, what you're gonna put on YouTube, yeah. right, is not gonna be exactly what you put on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, right? So different messages for different platforms. Well, let me give you another hack. Sure. YouTube is a long form platform. This podcast, however long it goes, well, it's, not a, it's not a 40 second clip, right? right? I love data. 
I love making data-driven decisions. It might be great to feel a certain way, but I want to see that it actually has a result. 100%. Right? My so, morning conversation. Great. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube gives you the best data of any platform. So when this video comes out, you'll see in your audience retention, there's a, there's a curve yeah, called yeah, the yeah. audience retention curve, mm -hmm. where basically you see where people are leaving the video. Mm -hmm. So at the start, it's 100%. Everybody who watches at 0000, zero, zero, zero they're, they're there. But then as the video goes on, it's this curve. You'll see at some points a sharp curve where it drops a lot. People left. Whatever you did there sucked. Don't do that again. Probably a commercial. Even timing around the commercials. Right. If you do it too soon, you might lose a big percentage of sure. your audience. But there'll also be these magical moments where it's flat, which means nobody left. For this two-minute clip, nobody left. Whatever we were talking about, nobody left. And then you'll have some really magical moments where it goes up. How is that possible? People rewinding the clip to watch that part again. Ooh. That's what you cut and put to your Instagram. Ooh, good hack. Guys, you hear that? In other words, repeat that. Again, I like that a lot. <laughs> no, seriously. It's great. That's a good it is one. a good I like hack. That. People are doing it. Let's hear it. Do it saves again, time for your team. Slow it down. In other words, let me repeat. Let me re I'll mirror it back to you. Let's I like it. That. Okay, so you have your basic retention curve, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to notice how it starts at 100%. It's going to go down because it's got to go down. Sometimes it'll go down dramatically. Oops, I did something wrong. I don't want to repeat that. Other yep. times it'll just be flat. That's really good. Then every once in a while, you say, what the heck? It actually went up. How did that happen? They loved it so much. They rewinded. You take that portion and put it on Instagram. Yep. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you think it fits best. But it saves your team from guessing as to what's going to do well. You already know what does well. And often it's not what your team would have picked or, or I would have picked. I really like that part. But I look at their audience retention like, huh, nobody yeah, else likes it's, it. It's really interesting. By the way, it's a really profound thing you just said without even thinking about it. Is that what I found is whatever you think Everyone's gonna love it. It's, just, it's almost never what everyone loves for some some reason. Like this, people are, uh, the, as a group, it's like you can't guess what is gonna connect with people. I mean, you have some idea, but sure. the point is you never really know until you test it, right? So you're a big believer in testing and analytics, right? I do more split tests than maybe anybody on YouTube. Yeah. We have I've done thirteen hundred different split tests on YouTube. We have a hundred and thirty seven right now that are happening. Where I'm split testing different things on my channel. So what type of things? Okay, so the biggest mistake I think people make when they split test, they test more than one thing at a time. Yeah. Right? That's the obvious one, of right? Of course. Yeah. So tell me, what are the, some of the things that you do? Give me an example of some really profound split tests. If you give me real life examples. And I assume this is the sort of stuff that's going to be in your course, right? So you just yeah. give us a little preview. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right? So why don't you give me an example of a, of a split test that, that gave you such profound information and you used it and tell me what happened. Start with the thumbnails. So looking at yours. Uh, this is a visual game, right? First off, understand that YouTube, don't think of it as search. We're not playing search, we're playing suggested. Suggested are the videos that show up after your video is played. Down the side on desktop, down below on mobile. They'll watch one video from search, but then watch eight, nine, 10 suggested. So even though YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, suggested is how the channels grow. Your goal with where you're at right now, you a couple hundred thousand you know, subscribers on YouTube. Yeah, we just you want, I'm pretty, It's amazing, yeah. that's great. But you wanna be showing up after Grant's video, after Gary's video, after all these guys who are ahead of you, you want to be destroying the sidebar, right? right? So that they're they're watching, they watch one video, and then they're watching eight of yours, Sure. right? To start to do that, I need to know what a Jordan Belford thumbnail looks like. Your thumbnails are all over the place. My thumbnails. Your thumbnails are all over the place. What's wrong with you, guys? <laughs> But this Evan's is, coming in as my consultant now. I'm changing everything. Okay. I, I mean, at least you did something, right? Unbelievable. And that's the problem. I've been wondering. I should have 2 million subscribers by now because I don't really deal with this stuff. I'm, not, I'm out on the road all over the world. These are the hacks. This is what, this is what I'm getting guys, you're unbelievable. To. Unbelievable. All right, anyway, I need then. to know what a Jordan Belfort thumbnail looks like. What should it look like? Now tell me. I want you to design my thumbnail. Consistency. No. So, okay. A couple, couple main things to keep I in mind. I know you know how to do this. I want you to do it right now. I want you to design my thumbnail. Come on. So, I want a headshot of you every time. All right. I want it. I want an emotional headshot. I want a face. Not just like your LinkedIn profile standard boring What type of you like this? You know, like, yeah, should, should we land them? It could be. Should blue Magnum or should blue steel? Make it to the content. La Tigre. <laughs> you watch Zoolander? No. Oh. I don't you know watch I movies. These, all you kids, you're a kid compared to me. You guys don't know the references from all the great movies. Know your audience and make better references. God damn it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> he sleeps with the fishes. Where's that from? The Godfather. Thank God. We got one. All right, good. Okay, let's keep going. Anyway, so I only do. I only do. I only know three things. What? YouTube no, like in, in general. YouTube. We could talk YouTube, salsa dancing, and League of Legends, and, and everything I else. Say, and I, I met your wife for like five minutes, and you you know how to. 
punch above your own weight because okay. she's far too good for you. Okay, <laughs> we agree she's on awesome. that. Right? You go, you agree on that, right? <laughs> yeah. How did he? How did he convince you to marry? I, I mean, I, she's in the uh, salsa dancing. So, uh, oh, okay, guy. Because yeah. I was trying to figure that out. I'm like, she. I don't know. She seems great to you. Yeah, you're just kidding. Yeah. Tell me, okay, what's thumbnails. your thumbnail? Okay, so my emotional, what type of face? I want whatever is related to the video. No, related to the video. Oh, so, not the same face. No, different face every time, but what? your face, because your personal face. brand, it's your channel. It's okay. not some logo, right? It's you. A face only a mother could love. Right? Exactly. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so your face related to the topic. So whatever we're going to call this, you make a face related to this video. Okay. So if you're like the Grant interview that you did, it's not going to just give me, right? right? Yeah. Something emotional, right? Look at the camera. I want to see whites to the eyes. Whites to the eyes. Look at the camera. This guy, yeah. And like here, right? Because it's being seen on mobile, which is suggested. It's this tiny little thing. I can't see who you are when it's a full body shot, right? Same thing with your guest. Like you're optimizing for the phone. You're not optimizing for desktop. So this is a problem when when people are designing thumbnails. Oh, it looks great on my full screen monitor here. Look at all that. But you can't make out anything when you get to the phone. Right. Right. So you need to be on it because you're a personal brand. It's it's the Jordan Belfort channel. Right. Your guest also uh, zoomed in on the face. If you're doing something with the whiteboard or something else, great, but still closer in. Similar consistent font. Just like when you do your logo, you've got that font. So what's what's the Jordan Belfort font? What's the Jordan Belfort color scheme? And then staying consistent on all of it. Um, I would leave with a powerful opinion on, on the title. Like the title needs to be something that's going to punch and hit hard. Imagine a, a magazine headline and then a small version of that on the thumbnail itself. Can you bubble come up here, please? Yes, bubble, come bubble, come up, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so, so the font, what was the last thing you said? I'm sorry. So let me, let me see. Can we pull this up? Sure. Let's pull up your channel. Yeah, I'm my son come up here. Oh, your son, your son oh, does yeah. this? Oh, yeah. Let me load your, where's your YouTube yeah, channel? Can, yeah. Make no, but his, most people don't know. his hair, too. Most people don't know. his hair. Okay, so like, be, like, okay, good, okay. Good, look at this. Look uh, at this. Okay, we have, these are your most four recent videos. There okay. Yeah. Okay, your four most recent videos. Yeah. Okay, this is Matt, Matt Barnes. Yeah. Where are you on this video? You're not anywhere. I, can you see? You want to yeah. go closer? Look at that first one. Shit. This is the Jordan Belford podcast. God damn it! Right? You guys are unbelievable. You're all fired. Everybody, <laughs> I can do it all myself. Okay, so I can't. Look how small that is. You look at your eyes. That's how people are looking at it. Like, what am I looking at? I need to know what that's Jordan Belfort. People are not. Here's what's happening. Let me show you. Okay, if I click on this, if, so you have maintaining. There's a reason for everything. I at least I don't even believe Listen, it. If I click on this, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna show up. Guys, you, you gotta buy his course. This guy knows. Look, he, like, look what happens underneath. I see. I see. You're not even showing up against your own videos. This is the problem. Gary V. Simon Sinek. Gary V. Inc. Tom Bill you like. There's one finally, but, but look, look, what's what? that? Where's your face? I no one knows that, right? The f Jesus yeah, Christ it's Almighty! But look how small it is, man. man. Look at how small those it are. It just gets uh, insult to injury, right? Yeah, I need to. But but listen, the good thing is you can go back and fix all these after. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Thumbnails and titles you can fix. Someone's later. gonna be busy tonight. Yeah, yeah. You should go back and fix all of it. But you've got green, you've got yellow, you've got blue, you've got a whole bunch of different face. Like, see, this is great. This one is this. This is the one that you did out of. Uh, like you're pointing to your head. What's that? There's no text. This is the one you did with Goldcast. Oh, because they did. That's why it looks good. Yeah, figures. So the one with Grant, right? Look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says, it says, there's Grant. That's good. There's you. That's good. I would punch in a little bit closer, a little bit more emotion on the face. But then the only thing I see on the top is number 14. Who said it? it's number 14? Who gives a right? People aren't watching your videos in that in sequential order. Doesn't matter. Podcast, yes, Useless YouTube, information. No. And then it says what Grant, it say? Grant Carr, but then the, it gets cut off because bottom right, there's always the, the timestamp, right? So you can't read it. It should say something like, I don't know what happened there. Wolf destroys Grant. Great. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> something like that, right? Because people are making the decision quickly. They're flicking through to see what I want to watch next. Then they're gonna they're gonna hit it. That when it's an interview, you should take the most fire piece of content. I think you do that. You do coming ups, right? You take like the most fire piece of content and bring it to the beginning as a preview to what's coming. Yeah, but you're not getting the clicks. Like you need to get the clicks. But let me ask you, why am I understand that the thumbnail is incorrect? Why are my videos not on my own video? Like why are they not putting my videos? Good on? question. So two main things that you want to do. One, fix the thumbnails. Consistency. So. Part of the problem is when they're looking at your video, they saw 
they saw this video of, of you and Grant on a thumbnail. Now they're waiting. They're looking for – you're training them. This is what a Jordan Belfort thumbnail looks like. Meanwhile, your next videos are showing up underneath, but they're not clicking on it because they think – they don't think that that's your thumbnail. So then YouTube says they're not clicking, so why put them there? Exactly. We're not going to do it anymore. They're not clicking it. So you want to have consistency in your thumbnail design. Uh, I would put your logo bottom left or, bot or, or any of the corners except the bottom right. Put, put your logo, the GB, make it easy to see each time as well so that people can always know that this is a Jordan Belford video. And like in terms of like, there's how many words? So obviously you get the words, you can't have that many, right? Because it's just not much space. Look, yes. Here so he is. Let's go. Pull up a chair. Hey, hey, here here we go. I got my boy here. Yeah, yeah, come on in. You're on. Join the podcast. Join the fun. All right. I put so this is, this is good, the man. Hey, good to meet you. Evan. Bowen. Cool. All right. So Bowen? You, Bowen. 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 Yeah. Bowen's expert. By, he does a lot of stuff. YouTube's not him. We just started with that. So yeah. he's yeah. saying my thumbnails suck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, go he, ahead. He, so he just here's this long story. There's no, there's no consistency. People don't know it's me, right? The images are not emotional. Give him a quick run down here. Yeah. yeah, okay. So here's here's what we want. So we're looking at, we're looking at, we're looking at these as the past four, right? Those are past four. One, like the interview should always be him. Mm. That top one with the guy smoking weed, I don't know that that's a Jordan Belfort podcast. And also yeah. the number 28, no, irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant. It's sequential doesn't matter on YouTube, right? Because okay. people aren't consuming necessarily in order. It's more for the long game. So in five yeah. years, if somebody's watching it, the number one message of being number 28 doesn't make a difference. We just, so we just start with YouTube, right? So give me a, how long would it take you to get me to a million subscribers given my brand? How often are you posting? Daily? Maybe you post 80 people here. Every post day. Every day. We post as much as you want. How often should we post? I would love to see you get to daily. And I would also mix in things so that it's not as time consuming for you each time. Because this takes a lot of time. No, we have unlimited content to post. Fresh, daily, you know, fresh stuff live and mixed with stuff from, from the archives. Okay, great. So, but then if you go daily, then you start seeing what's working. Some things will work and some things won't work. Like maybe the whiteboard series tanks compared to the other series, so you stop it and you inject something new. You always want to be adding something new. You want to kill your, your worst series always. So the big thing with the thumbnails is that, in other words, when someone scrolls through, in other yeah. words, um, they, what, they, they have to be able to look at it, immediately know what it basically, Jordan Belfort video, right? That's Jordan Belfort, because the goal is they just finished watching your video. I want them to see the thumbnails and say, that's another Jordan Belfort video. They're Got not it. doing it because, like, you're too small. It's totally different color schemes, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm seeing like with like people like Gary Vaynerchuk, yourself. Yeah. You always keep the focus on the the subject of hand being you, the actual you know, YouTuber itself, and then never you never have the interviewer be part of it. Like, cause I'm looking at I, I just went on your phone and looked at Gary Vaynerchuk. It's yeah. always him. Yeah. Tony Robbins always him. Yeah. And even yours. Mostly always you. I run a slightly different model because what I'm doing is DJing lots of different people's stuff. Yeah. So if I'm doing a Jordan Belfort. You're leveraging other people's celebrity to help you become more famous, basically, right? On some level? Uh, I'm also introducing a ton of people to, to Jordan Belfort that they never knew who you were before. Yeah. No, I, in other words, right, but from your perspective, when you're trying to grow your viewership, yeah. do you strategically link yourself to all these celebs, right? Or well, people with big followings, right? Yes. And I, I, now I'm, I'm bringing, like if I did a, I have to look at my stats. If I did a, if I did a Jordan Belfort video, right. I don't know how well it would do. It wouldn't tank. It right. wouldn't crush. Okay. So me having you on my channel, you might think I'm using your celebrity. I'm, I'm not even using them. I'm just saying. Leveraging yeah, yeah. whatever. It's I'm like anybody. Within a YouTube, I had Jay Abraham on my channel. You know Jay Abraham? Love Jay. He was on my hey. People like, uh, who's this guy? Yeah, me too. Yeah, he didn't do that well much. But he's great information though. But I, I know, but like that's what bothers me because I want I want people like you to be household names mm. with with the current audience, with a generation you are with with millennials you're not, yeah, house <laughs> really yeah, well I am from the movie I wouldn't say on YouTube so there's different platforms right sure but but that's that's the game right that's the goal I want to, I, I we tried making a deal with you know Jim Rohn. Yes. Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' original mentor. Right, he's Jim, the only he's guy. Gotta be held. He's got to be. He's passed. He's passed. Oh, yes. His, his, his estate, 110. <laughs> his estate runs his, his um, content okay, now. Okay, right. And they want to sell their DVDs. But his and, stuff is not particularly exciting, Jim Rohn. If you hear Jim Rohn speak. I, sure. 
right? Sure, Would but you agree he's, with that he's a no? legend. He's a legend. No, well, he's well, like... you see, the thing is, it's it's interesting that you say that because I don't agree with that. No, it's, he's a, a legend within the self development sure, world. Sure, That's sure. a very small world in terms of the real world, right? Yes, so sure. The idea, it's like I think Tony is a it delivers a great message. Sure. So so much of this theater, especially when you get to on YouTube and stuff like that, how you deliver the message, right? Is that important? Or you don't think that's important? Uh, both. I'm just. I want. I want to. I don't want to see his message die. I'm a believer in the message. I love. I love what you're teaching. I love that you're. You're staying consistent because again, a lot of people who who look like you have had success who start something like this often give up and quit because they're not seeing instant results with it. Um, so I'm, I'm confused. What do you, what do you mean? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. The instant results. Define instant results. You've had a ton of success, obviously, in what you've done. Yeah, it's really hard for people to start over and and have the humility to say I am not known to an entire generation of people, and create a show that then doesn't take off and do well. It's it's well, if you go into as a businessman, yeah, if you go into something yeah. thinking that it's going to be an instant success without pivoting four or five times, you might as well not even get started. That's just a ridiculous. You know, the idea is that people, anyone who does that, really should not be teaching because if you don't understand, it's going to take time. No matter what you do, nothing works. Every once in a while, you get lucky, right? But it's very rare that something works the first time perfectly. I'm, I've dealt with <laughs> all of them. Would you agree with that? Um, that most things take time until sure. you get them right, right? I mean, I don't. Want, I'm not going to cast judgment on what people want to do, uh, you know, with their legacy and with their time once they've already had a lot of success. Um, but I can tell you a lot of people quit and they give up. And you, you know Tom Bilyeu? Has he been on? Mm, uh, no, theory? no, but I like him. I think he's really good. So Tom was one of the – I love Tom. And when I first had him on my show, I, I was then in my head and I messaged him like, please don't stop because I love this content so much. Please don't stop. Like, please, please keep going because we, the world needs your message. But it's so hard for someone who's had this billion dollar exit to then start and suck at something at the beginning. Did he suck? Yes. I mean, everybody sucks. It's not just you don't suck as hard as somebody else. Well, thank you. Because because really you're nice of you. <laughs> you're coming in. Are you like the master of the backhand accountant? <laughs> what I mean by that Do is Do you still suck? Oh no. no. <laughs> Are you good now? <laughs> You you don't suck at communicating. You're okay. you're great at persuading, influencing. You. You're fantastic in front of the camera. Thank you. What you suck at is being able to create a YouTube channel. Okay. Create a podcast. Get distribution. Okay. To a world that doesn't know you. So you say so. It's interesting because I have a company that does. You're really insulting my podcast company because I don't do my podcast. This, this is not what I do. No, I'm I not, just do. But it's just part of the process. It takes time. <laughs> well, thought, aren't they supposed to know that my podcast company? So here's my my quiz. My question. I don't do my own. I just deliver a podcast, right? Yeah. I don't do the thumbnails. I don't do all the stuff. I paid a company to do that. So what you're saying is my company sucks. No, seriously. And that's a good point. I'm, I'm totally open to criticism because I hired a company that was supposed to be experts. So you're saying they're not. They suck. I don't know about the podcast inside. Your YouTube channel needs a lot of help. Okay, so let's distinguish two different. You, 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 what you're talking about now yeah. is not podcasting. You're talking about YouTube, a YouTube channel. Yes. Okay, so well, do you, do you but, know but, what my podcast results, my list? Do you know what my, my podcast results are? Do you know? What are they? I don't know. Oh, great. I don't even know. I don't no. care. I, let, me, let me explain something to you. I'm in this for the long term. Great. I'm not tracking every single day. I don't care what things. Great. I know what I'm doing. I Great. know it's going to work out, right? YouTube are you talking about, are you talking about you, you, let's just get this clear because my podcast guy's going to flip out when he sees this. Okay. okay. Are you talking about YouTubing or podcasting? I'm talking about YouTube being your, your primary home. That then everything gets split afterwards. Right. But, this, but a podcast lives yeah. in many other places besides YouTube. Uh, sure, but YouTube—it shouldn't even be. You shouldn't even call it a podcast. It should be your YouTube show that then happens to also be a podcast. It then happens to take clips and go to Instagram, and happens to take clips and go to all these other platforms. It's video first, YouTube first. If you want to build a long-term brand, because it's the only place where your content lives forever. Okay, so the idea is that I shouldn't position what I'm doing as a podcast. You, you should be a YouTube show, right? And then I just release it to a podcast network separately. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I blame Tony Robbins for all of this. Why? Because Tony started a podcast. Well, I think I, de I definitely would like to call him on the YouTube side of things. I mean, like, the, it's an interesting dynamic, certainly. But like, as for for us, we are. I love this. this is, I think this, by the way, I think this is, I'm not the least, you know, I'm not the least bit insulted. I think this is no, awesome. No, I know, I know, I know. Not, no, I think it's great. And I love, I love to, to, and listen, the dude, you think, wait, 
I'm not pretending to be an expert at YouTube. I don't know the first fucking thing about it. And, and it's, it's not, not what I do. And, and it's not even about YouTube. I'm it's just, about I'm pissed at my podcast company. I'm like saying, wait a second. What the fuck are they doing? But maybe so, they're doing their job because they're doing well, podcasts. They're doing well on the podcasting, but we'll, you know what? Well, keep going. I, I want to definitely comment on like the podcast because I, I think that what, what we're saying is like being like misconstrued because I think what you were, uh, were originally attacking was like the actual YouTube and like the facade side of it being the, you know, the, the, title the thumbnail and how we're not taking advantage of like the overall images that we could be capturing a lot more attention and those titles that are like much more like you know or are you saying the that's, interviews suck that that's no 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 interesting though are you saying, that, that, no. No, 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 saying my, my interviews suck too i haven't seen enough oh so you don't know if they suck no okay so but, you, but you're saying the marketing side sucks i'm saying first because i want to fix it I'm, I'm not even we I'm, start high level with strategy okay that jordan belfort for his communication is a video first, YouTube first centric place. From there, we cut everything that he's doing and we put to all the different networks. Podcast, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snap, you know, all of it. So long, I understand what you're saying. So it's long form. It, yeah, Gary Vee talks about it in his book. But it's video about. YouTube first. This isn't a podcast. This is a YouTube video interview show. Do you However, that, that becomes yeah, a podcast. That, that we do in a comment. I was like, this is well, that's my podcast business, company. And there's a lot more. <laughs> A lot more intricacies are building with it. So, like, as the YouTube channel may not look like this, like, amazing center where, like, yours, which is it's very, you know, calculated, all the decisions yeah. are made via, you know, analytics. We're actually making a lot of moves at the same time. You know, Jordan, one of, one of the main things he says, which we all stand by, is like, I mean, bifurcated focus. Well, we focus on one thing, we also focus on. Well, yeah, right. YouTube is not a big part of our business. You know, it's not the main part of our business. No, but I, I listen, I believe we should be the best at everything we do. So, if you're telling me there's a better way to go about running the YouTube, I am all for it. I'm just trying to get very clear here yep. on what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So when you say that the, my show sucks, you saying the marketing on YouTube is incorrect, not the content, or does the content suck too? I want to really know because if it does, I'm open to criticism of that too. We can load up your analytics and go through it and see. I'd love to do that. So, so now, let's just say the content is good. Yeah. Let's just assume that. Yeah. All right. And we'll assume the content. We'll have a separate conversation about sucking. Let's assume it's, the content's great. Yeah. But it's not being managed in a way that's allowing it to grow as it should grow, right? Sure. Okay. I agree with that. And I've been saying that to you all last week, okay? <laughs> so we're on the same page here, okay? Just so you know, all right? Great. So I'm, I don't disagree. I was saying to myself, why the f*** isn't this growing? Because I know people love this stuff, right? So what you're saying is it's the first analysis you make here. It starts with the fact that the thumbnails are off. There's a big, a, a big red flag. What you're saying is that you can't even look at my Both. channel. Yeah. You can't look and say, you know that you should click on this one. Ah, that's a Jordan Belfort thumbnail. Yeah. Is that the first blaring thing you see? Yep. Okay, and what's the next? I'm getting free consulting here. From yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the, that's what I want, because I'm going to take all your advice and use it. So okay. what's the second yeah, yeah. thing I okay, should do? Okay, so here's the, YouTube is a suggested video game, right? That's how we want. So how do you, sh before you show up against Gary's videos, you have to show up against your own. When I'm looking through, you're not showing up against your own. So how do and we do that? And why is that? Yeah, tell me that. Great, so first is thumbnails, right? Consistency in thumbnails. I'm going to click on it. Next, this is what nobody's doing. Nobody's doing it. Gary's not doing it. Grant's not doing it. Nobody's doing it. That you right. can do Who it. the camera so no one else does it but this me? This is it. Uh, okay, tell everyone. At the, end of the, at the end of the video, do you have end cards? Mm -hmm. Okay. At the end of the video, you have a 20-second window to tell people what to do next. What you want to do is tell... Right, like Go look at the and things on the right. No, they don't do, do that. Like they do it all. Like they, they, Let's hear. Found like the late, late night shows. Hey, you know, if you like this video, click subscribe to watch more. No, nope. let me hear. Don't do that. Let me hear. Let me hear. Uh, great, it's wrong. Good. Yeah, let me hear. Do. Oh, yeah. Don't tell people to subscribe. Let's see what the man does. Don't don't tell people. Don't say thank you for watching. For watching. Yeah. Don't say that either. Okay. <laughs> don't act like the show is over. Because your goal is, I want them to watch eight of my videos, not one. So as soon as you say thank you, people start leaving. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really, Nope, gone, bye. You want to end powerfully and then tell them where to go next. So after this video, let's, we'll, we'll gameplay it. Yeah. After this video, where, what should they watch? It's on your channel. Whiteboard Wednesday, for instance. About what? Rapport building. Well, negotiation. But it's got to be like, no, no, not just, we're not, we haven't talked about negotiation. Don't send me to a negotiation oh. video. Something that we've talked about. We're going to send Oh, me. but you can groom with the, with the current video. Yes, yes. Guy, okay. They came in, they well, watched this. Great, but which one? Well, What's the most relevant to what, I mean, we've, re we've referenced Grant like a bunch of times. Maybe you send it to that. 
So the idea is that the end, I also, so the end, what you're saying is, correct me if I'm wrong, let me, because I like this. Yep. You're saying is you want to end the video abruptly without signing off and then directing them where to go. And you should be directing them to be to a, another video that complements the video they just yep. finished watching. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be, any yep. topic. But each video has its own ending. So give me an example of how, an, give me an example of how you do it in yours. Great. So if I did a, if I did a, Jordan Belfort, you know, volume two of top 10 rules for success. That's one of the series on my channel. Guys, if you like this video, you want 10 more rules from Jordan, go check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. I'll see you there. Say it again. Let's one more time. Let's read it again. <laughs> you can rewind it. No, let's hear it. Let me hear, let me hear it again. <laughs> Guys, if you like this video, there's 10 more rules from Jordan Belfort on that video right there next to me. Go watch it. I'll see you there. Assume that they're just in the first quarter. But how do you know it's there? It's going to show, your team will show it on screen. You have 20 there's seconds. A, a thumbnail, there's a, imagine, if you will, like a, a, an ending screen. This is how much I know about YouTube. That's and, great. Uh, there's a, there's specific you know what's called? I'm like an old person. I just look young. <laughs> there's a specific formats you could do. So, for example, there would be two videos on the right, two videos on the left, one video on the top, subscription on the yeah. bottom. All you millennials, don't laugh at me, okay? I have other wisdom to share with you. you. Know, I actually love the way you explain it, though, because I think the important thing with a lot of people and entrepreneurs like yourself who do a lot of explanations, they always miss the itty-bitty itty details about like how to do it. They say, oh, do all these things, but they never explain the actual okay. way this to set it up. Important. This, 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 this is, is why super experts, important. This is an example of an expert. You're an expert at what you do, and it's obvious, and I love that. I'm not even the least bit of it. I think it's great. You want I know you're not. I know you, wanna, you want people to watch eight of your videos. That's your goal. Eight? Whatever, eight, 10, 12. Like when they watch one, they're not just watching one. This is an ambiguous number saying eight. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, want them to, I want them to consume. I want them to dive in and, and eat Jordan Belfort's knowledge. Because you're looking forward to being trending. And what right. about. Okay, but, um, but okay, hold on. This going, is, sure. if you, now you're training YouTube that when they watch one video, they watch another video. Mm -hmm. And then they watch another video. Mm -hmm. YouTube wants to keep people on YouTube all day long. Mm -hmm. That's their goal. You're helping facilitate their goal. So now they're going to start showing more of your videos against your own videos. Mm. And now they're going to start showing your videos against other people's videos, mm -hmm. which is then when you take off and blow up. Mm. So suggested, I haven't looked at your data, suggested should be your number one source of traffic. Of course. At the start, it's only going to be against your own channel. It's like warm market stuff. Marketing. And then, and then as, you can, as you do those two things, those are the two biggest, thumbnails, consistency, and... Titles. Uh, titles are good for, for getting people to click. Which is huge. Which is huge. But not as much for, I want to make the connection. Somebody who watches one Jordan so Belfort video. color consistency, graphic consistency. Yep. Yep. Anything else consistent? Face. Are you saying face, right? What yeah, yeah. Like Joe Rogan. I mean, I know you said the numbers were a thing, but Joe Rogan does those famously. And they are very, it's not, it, it, it just adds a, a psych psychological thing in the back of your mind saying, wow, he's been around for a while. He's done 3,000 episodes. It doesn't it's, make it's, sense. It's, it's I, 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 I would think yeah, to, no. I would think it, does, it it probably is a lot of wasted real estate. That's my my it's senses. A small little thing that right corner, like, oh, it's episode sixty-five. Why would anyone care though? Oh, no, but people can all say, oh, I missed the first sixty-three. I'm What's not going to watch. What's the point watch of watching sixty-four? It. Do you watch Do you watch the eighteenth episode of Friends when you know you missed the first seventeen? Yeah. I certainly like it for reference. I get it though. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so put, so, it, so put it in, at the, in your description. So what, what what would you what would be an example of words? What words would you put on the thumbnail or no words? Okay, so think about. Um, we're, we're, for an interview like this, mm. right? You take the most fire moment from the interview. Mm. You put a clip of that at the beginning. You tell me my podcast sucks. We do that. We do that stuff. Yeah, great. Great. I love, boy, boy, Colin's going to get so much shit from me, my podcast guy. He didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't say his podcast. I'm just busting his I know, balls. Dude, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I just want you to stay focused because I, I want dude, you to get results so that buddy, you can grow your YouTube channel. You know how I became successful? <laughs> By tapping information from experts. If I have That's someone's great. an expert, I'm happy. I will take whatever I can from you. I know, I know. As I much know. as I can and get. And I know, and the entertainment is awesome. And anyone by you guys who's not, I'm doing this so you will do the same. Just so you understand why I'm doing this. It's for everybody here, okay? He's giving up a lot of really great granular stuff we need here. to get some results. And, right. and that's deep granular, but it's also like highly, highly. These are the things no, I'm these the are needle, easily, right? No, these Moves are easily, no. Uh, what I like about what you said is that they're easy to implement. Yeah. They're obvious, and they'll probably make a, a an immediate impact that I'll be able to notice and track. That's the case. And this is how you leapfrog the guys who are ahead of you. Well, what about talking about like the dark side of YouTube and like, which is like, uh, people, you know, they never want to comment on like how people jump from 200,000 followers all the way a million is because they start boosting their own content. They do via paid advertising and they boost their content via YouTube. And all of a sudden they're jumping millions of followers. Like for example, Grant Cardone, 
is jumping millions of followers. I know all the advertisers speak of speak of how they boosted his content to get him more to where he is. Like I, I know that's a very prevalent part of YouTube. Is that you think? Do you recommend boosting um, posts and stuff to grow? There's a so there's two smart things you can do. Okay, I only want I want I want things that will work long term, right? Not short hacks, right? Well, the short hacks like with a certain amount of money. Like for those who have a shit ton of money and just trying to grow your brand. They can yeah, do but that but the want. problem with just buying a bunch of subscribers, they're not gonna buy for you. There's no you can't monetize them. Yes, from a business perspective, absolutely. But even within a YouTube environment, when you first put out a video, it goes to your a, a slice of your current subscribers. If they like it, it goes to more of your subscribers. If they like it, it goes to all your subscribers. And if they like it, it goes out to the world. If you bought a bunch of- Wait, wait, wait a second. Okay. My own subscribers aren't seeing my videos? Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just like you said, you're trying to beat yourself in the beginning. Unbelievable. It's just like- Yeah. It goes to a slice. It goes it's, to it's a piece of slice. And it goes to one slice. So we were we use the word subscriber loosely in the YouTube world. They don't even show your own subscribers your no, stuff. No, 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 no. Like think about like think about it. like they're consuming so much content. There's only so much real estate on YouTube for them to see. Yeah. And if our content isn't at the right time at the right spot and it's not hitting trending, they just miss it. They go through the other ones. But he's saying is like the whole idea is if, about YouTube and the algorithm knows okay the they, these people are clicking on multiple of his videos. Therefore, once they watch another one of these other videos we've recommended, we most likely should recommend one of yours now, and then they'll go to that. That's it. So, so when your first video comes out, it goes to a slice of your subscribers. And again, if they like it, it goes to half of your subscribers. If they like it, it goes to all your subscribers. And if they like it, it goes out. When you say go out, it's there. I mean, it, it, it'll go out and put it in their search, in, those, in their results right away. Is that what you mean? Not search, when you search is in the game. Suggested, I mean. Yes, and browse. So when browse is when you go, uh, when I go to youtube.com. It doesn't, I, doesn't I, really I, I don't ever like, go on YouTube. When somebody goes to YouTube.com, there's going to be a list of suggested videos at the top. Now, I want to talk about Pornhub. I know, but I'm just kidding. You're, like, yes. you're, you're talking to him, and he's like, he's, there's no image being drawn right now for Jordan. <laughs> YouTube, you're just, like, you're just hitting terminology. We'll, we'll keep him focused. I, I've got it. I've got it. You go to YouTube.com. You're going to see a bunch of videos that are recommended for you. Part of those will be from your subscribers. But if they're subscribing to... 100 different people and they're all making yeah, daily yeah, content, it, it, right? It, yeah, yeah. So one of your videos might pop in there. Yeah. So here's the problem, right? It goes to a slice, to half, to the whole thing. Let's say that. If you bought a bunch of fake followers or bots or people from India or whatever, mm -hmm. the video goes out to your slice. It's going to hit them. Yeah. They're not going to watch it. And yeah. your videos then tank <sighs> organically. So now you have to keep spending. That's one type of people they buy. Mm. They're not buying. They're just not, sure. Not yeah, yeah. What do you mean buying yeah. real follow? I mean, just advertising, advertising, boosting to like-minded yes, people. Sir. So, so... The smart way to do it is you run um, what I call a bridge audience. This is a bonus video that's going to be in my in my. Uh, Let's hear it. Yeah, it's, you guys really should buy this his courses. Great. He's yeah, really yeah. A, he this really is, so, is a wealth of information. If you're willing to spend money, this is genius. Let me hear. I'm willing to spend money. You make an unlisted video. I love spending money. Okay, unlisted video it means it's not public. Okay, it's unlisted, so it's a hidden video. Okay, bridge audience. So what you should do is, for all of your people who have any kind of sizable YouTube audience. So me, Grant, whoever you's, uh, you've had on who has a following, you run that unlisted video with them on their channel. You can run your video with me against my own channel. Uh, is this from Google Ads? As a, uh, no, yes, but through the suggested. So how, it's a, how are you talking about that? Through Google Ads. Google, oh, Google Ads. Yeah, okay, Google yeah. Ads, you pick, you pick the placement. You could choose my channel, you could choose Grant's channel, you could choose whoever's channel. Mm -hmm. It's an unlisted video. And it plays for 15 seconds in the beginning. No, 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 not the beginning, the suggested. Can I ask you a question? Does he try to be crazy at home or what? Uh, not pre-roll. How do you guys get along, by the way? That's so Who? funny because- You and your wife. I'm just wondering, yeah. Our, uh, people we brought on the podcast, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Gates, he must make you started. crazy. He, he just showed up everywhere on Suggest and I just find it very funny. I, and, and that's brilliant. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people do that. It's okay, but here's the thing. with money to do that, though. No, it doesn't have to. For for the results that you want. They're well, it depends. Not monetizable results. So just like followers, and to anyone like who's not spending big bucks on that, you're gonna be losing a lot of money. You just be gaining followers. You really have to bet on that content. But but you, you, yeah, yes, it has to be good. And like now, the Grant one, maybe Grant's audience won't come and follow you after the interview, right? Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But but the people maybe you, they're hooked on stupidity. Great. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's an unlisted video because the, the open rates on, um, uh, the, sorry, the retention on an ad is usually really low. So you don't want that to sacrifice and hurt your actual interview, right? So you run an unlisted video campaign. You pay attention to the ending. So after that interview, where do you want to send them? And you can split test this, right? You can, run, you can send them to eight different kinds of videos because it's an ad. It's unlisted, mm -hmm. right? 
So then you send into a public video at the end of it, and and in the AdWords it'll then show sh um, in the AdWords it'll show I you how many subscribers you get from it, how many additional views you get from it, right? So the bridge audience, if you're willing to spend, it might it's it's more advanced stuff, but let super you, powerful. Let me ask you an honest question here, right? Yeah. So how much of what you're saying? Is just like anyone who really knows YouTube knows this stuff. Well, you really are at a higher level than most people. I'm pretty high level compared to most people. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of the guys out there, they're mostly dilettantes. They just you know they know some basic. I want to comment on this. I think that YouTube and, and on any social media, and you can and you can attest to this, or, or you can tell me if I'm wrong, is I think that there's strategy for the ones who are very smart, and then there's the way that everyone gets around just by being hot or exciting. On YouTube, right. if someone's attractive, <laughs> if you're attractive or cute, or if you're a girl with big tits and a big ass who likes doing stupid stuff, or if you're a guy like, no offense to those are watching, but like Logan Paul, Jake Paul, who just is addicted to doing dumb things, it's gonna be clickbait, and then people are gonna, and then you don't need intelligence, you don't need to learn about the algorithms, because that's what YouTube wants, because 15 year olds are gonna click on it, and it doesn't matter. But if you're someone who's smart and who actually wants to teach people content, well, how about combine those I, two together? One, let me clarify within within <laughs> within the thought leadership space. Within the education, thought leadership, entrepreneur space. I'm not flashing my tits anytime soon. Yeah, like a beauty channel, I could probably help, but nowhere near as, as like the stuff I'm telling you will work. Well, the 100%. perfect example is like Dan Bazirian. Like that Dan Bazirian alone, not much traction. Oh, he's a gambler or whatever. He's an interesting guy. But he combines himself with the 15 tits hot and ass, girls. Right, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden people are like, okay, I'm interested in Dan Bazirian's lifestyle. It's kind of interesting to me. And then they go from there. Right? Am I right? Or I totally sure? understand what you're saying. The idea would be to try to come up with the most exciting, amazing content and then cross it with this strategy. That's what Grant Cardone, when he was in our interview, he goes, oh, let's do a cage match. He goes, oh, no, buddy. Well, I, I totally made this video. Like, cause he's, cause he's thinking about, he's, he's thinking the, the surface level of what he, Michael's saying here, which is not like the, he, cause I'm sure he's guys doing this for him. So he's no idea other than the, the easy surface stuff, which is like, let's just think about a big title and a, a good thumbnail. Grant Cardone was short about for cage it, match. Got it, got it, got it. Is that right or wrong? Yeah, the more you can add show and entertainment, it, it's actually what will make this video work. Like for me, I'm frustrated because I just want to help you and get to content. And, and Why are you frustrated? Because you keep interrupting with jokes and funny stuff, which is great for the video. But it's like, I want to see you win. I'm going to right? win. Right? Okay. <laughs> I, no, I, I, I believe that people don't want to just watch something and be bored. They want to laugh and learn at the same time. I'm thinking about you, not your audience. Right. Yeah, but I'm more, uh, but I but I love my audience, and 100%. I'm doing it for my audience. One hundred percent. And I also like you, and I, I and you're a serious, you know, you're so tightly wound, well you make me <laughs> nervous. Okay, so um, I'm Focus. trying. I always have whatever I do. What my primary mission yeah. is, I'm gonna have fun doing it, or I'm not doing it. All right, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. Right? So why am I doing this show? Because it's fun, it's awesome, it's great, and it's gonna be huge, and I'll just keep doing it until it is right. But if I have someone's an expert yep. that can give me a, the whole idea is modeling. Right, you're giving me a model right yep. now, right? So that's why I'm soaking in the information. That's why I call myself up because you know he's he's working. He's really do our focus. He's never really been on YouTube until recently, right? Yeah. No, I mean I guess that before he said, when you're doing a lot. But of Evan is saying number start one. on YouTube. It should be yeah, number one. YouTube and then everything else. Everything flows it from it. Facilitates through that. Yeah, and it, make, it can make your job easier for the other platforms. How quickly do you think we'll see results from what you're saying? Uh, let's say tonight my staff's not leaving. Guys ain't leaving tonight. No. Let's say everything starts to be done like this. You know, how many videos do you have? Public. Uh, 120. 120 public. When did you start? Last year. Seriously. But we never. Oh, let me really start though. January. Not even. No. March, come on. Day. April. You're, you're <laughs> at two something now. Yeah, April. You're two something. Really, April. No, no, sorry, two hundred something now. Yeah. Around two hundred. Yeah. Something. Around two hundred. Yeah. yeah. Like Just shy two hundred. And, and what are we? We're not. We're in October. Yeah. You could get there inside of six months. How quickly can we see? Like, will I notice a pop right away? Like, what do we look for in a world? What what statistics should we be measuring every day? Great. Suggested um, becomes your number one source of traffic. So, but it'll start to be suggested against your own. Fix all your thumbnails. For all new videos, say go watch this video next. You can't you can't change that on old videos because you can't edit the actual video. But for new videos, like this should be your first one. You like this, go watch whatever, and then pitch that video. Tell me why I need to go watch that video, right? And how many levels down? So every video has one more daisy chain, right? It's always exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want them to mass consume. You want them watching eight to ten of your videos each time. How about length? What do you rec your recommended length? Ten minutes plus. Ten minutes plus. Mm -hmm. Just for ads. Uh, it's just easier to get exposure. There's no upper limit. Uh, it's kind of weird from that YouTube thing. Everybody's like, oh, I'm trying to get my video over 10 minutes. 
Yes. So that's for advertising. It's probably not your biggest concern of how much ad dollars you make off of YouTube. Um, but it, it just tends to do better. Like we will, we will fight to get to 10 minutes just for, for the algorithm. But after 10, we've had eight hour videos crush. Well, YouTube, uh, YouTube said, they really said, they said any video over 10 minutes will push more because they want to put their ads up. They make money. So 10 minutes at a minimum. So for. Are you? No, it's your phone. Uh, that's my phone. That's way too. I have my phone on silent. Way too chilled out for me. <laughs> what 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 is that notification? Is that a call? <laughs> so you're very, you're very like um very focused. Do you like what, what did, what, what's got you to this point? Of, like very you can almost like very like high high wound almost. It's interesting. Really? No, like I, no, he's, I, very, he's very passionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 what makes I know. I love it. I think it's great, man. Uh, you believe you believe. I, you know, I get, I'll tell you what I what I come take away from this. You 100 percent believe that you're right. And I, and I believe that it's right for you. If you want to see a quick talk I gave on how anyone can grow a YouTube channel, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. You can't only be trapped by what people want. You have to love it. Practice. Come do one. Yeah.